Hey folks, on the Susquehanna River today, the bear. Hey. And Pete. Hey. Getting ready to launch these boats. And uh, Bear, I'm going to have you try the 1103 at some point today. Sounds good. So it's right there. I actually got the uh, the one with the, the uh, weedless prop there. That one's a little bit different than than the one that comes with standard. So it chops the grass up pretty good. I don't think we're gonna have a lot of grass here. <laughs> a little cold. Yep. But we do yeah. have a a rock guard coming from uh, Trey Leach is working on one. Innovative Sportsman will have a rock guard rock for the 1103. So. Okay. And we tested that, what, month, month and a half ago. I think it was about a month I seen it. Um, Jake Harshman kind of really tried to kill the prototype with it so. <laughs> tested it on the rocks yeah <laughs> it survived Good all right it. let's get in the water right. so this is quite a departure from what i've been doing down in florida in the the temperatures and kind of fish I've been catching in in Florida but uh, one thing I did pick up in Florida is they have these bags that they hand out at the tackle shops uh, it's up to you uh, basically to keep your your rivers and uh, and streams clean I got two I'm gonna give them to you guys and then I got this thing here it straps onto the back of the uh, of my seat it's a caddy can and whenever I find trash, I just kind of shove it in there. At the end of the day, I'll, I'll clean out the, the caddy can and, uh, you know, hopefully take a little bit, little bit of trash, you know, out of the river, leave it cleaner than I found it. So uh, it's, it just unzips here. You take this out, you dump it. And uh, I got, you know, I got a dumpster at the farm. I can, I can throw all kinds of stuff that we've found. Um, but yeah, I'll give these, they're basically, these are the same bags when I worked in food service that, uh, the onions came in, but I'll give one of these to, to Bear and Pete. So whatever, grab one of those, whatever trash you find. Will do. Just take care of Yeah, whatever you see floating down the river. Did you catch what I said? Give a hoot, don't pollute. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> So we have 36.9 degree water and uh, 36.8, it's pretty chilly. Uh, I'm just glad that we we don't have any ice forming on the river yet. So today I think is, you know, the successful thing to do is it's going to be jerk baits, absolutely dead sticking them in the right places. Uh, and then small soft plastics uh, z-man paddle tails drop shot um, zipper style worm um, I got a couple other smaller z-man soft plastics on the on the Ned heads and and maybe um, some of the chin locks so we'll uh, we'll give those a try we're really just looking for calm water right now we're in water that's moving pretty good so I'm gonna go ahead and drop the hammer on this and get downstream a bit. See how fast this goes. With the current, we're going 8.3 miles per hour. Which I don't really need to go that fast. In fact, we're already at the first spot. Got a nice little Scrub Island here, little point that comes out, ledges, calm water behind it. Let's go find them. So I'm gonna sit outside the eddy, cast into it, put that jerk bait right up in there. I got a little bit of scent on there, just slathered on some of the liquid mayhem, uh, just so when they get up up tight to it, they're uh, they're going to believe it and think, yeah, this is real food. I'm going to ease in 
maybe drop the anchor and let it kind of linger in there. One rip, just drift with it. All right, nothing in the first eddy. So I did find my first piece of trash coming up on it right now. Gatorade bottle or water bottle. Press that so I can get more stuff in there. Yeah, just now. With you on the on the line. It's a good one. I've you're you're good luck. I've I've been uh, been fishing all morning. I haven't caught anything, and I call you, and the fish bites right away. Yeah. I gotta call you again next time. I need to get a bite. <laughs> A good one. I'm gonna pick up the phone so I don't drop it on, drop this fish on them, on you. All right. I got this one on. It's a Z-Man. It's a little finesse jig with a soft plastic. It's a. TRD, TRD bugs. Yeah. So, something I just got. It works pretty good in 36 degree water. <laughs> okay. All right, Coop, I'll give you a holler back in a little bit, okay? Okay, Jason. All right, nice 18 inch, 36 degree water. Susquehanna River smallmouth. We'll get her back in there. That was fun. All right, so let's take a closer look at the bait that that one hit. It is a Z-Man. The jig is a uh, Z-Man shrooms finesse jig and it's got that that nice wire weed guard right up top there so it's basically their their shrooms head which is like the uh, you know the Ned rig head um, but it's got the it's got a skirt on it and it's got the wire weed guard I like the wire weed guard because I'm throwing it to this bank and there's a lot of brushy stuff and the trailer that I'm using is the TRD bugs so this guy right here what I like about that bait is and you'll see in a minute I will apply a lot of scent to it and these um, that Elastec that super durable Elastec has those ridges and all those ridges hold scent so when I can you know get the uh, the liquid mayhem in there it just holds a nice scent so all right, I'll rig this one up and show you what it is. It's also got a real nice um, hook keeper here. I'll pull that down. You can kind of take a look when you you jam that on there. That little wire hook on the back of the shank um, <clears throat> that keeps that Elastec from kind of bunching up at the end. We'll throw this right back in that same area. See if that 18 incher has a buddy. Yeah, he whacked it, whacked it real good. So, because the Elastec is is um, buoyant, it it orients it with the TRD bugs up, with well, those appendages kind of catching whatever current is down there. So, that's the rig.
I always like to look beyond them, see if they have any friends. And this one does not, it doesn't look like. Sometimes you can see big brother or big sister chasing up, up with it. But this was just a solo fish. Ooh, just like that, it's out. Got it right. I can see when I netted it right on the upper upper lip. Right. Roof of the mouth, but, but just on the lip. That's why a small profile is, you know, such an important thing. You know, because if you give them a real big profile. They uh, they grab the back half of it, and um, <clears throat> you won't get them. You know they'll rip that that right off there, right off of your jig head. Ugh. Sixteen and three quarter, nice fish, nice fat fish. It's cold weather. They they uh, hold on to their weight. They don't burn it up. They don't have a real fast metabolism in 36 degrees, so whatever they eat stays with them longer. So, all right, I'm gonna use my motor and let this guy breathe, but I'm pulling that anchor up. And I'm gonna release this one away from the others because if she goes down there and sits right next to her brothers and sisters down there and looks freaked out the rest of them get freaked out and they won't eat so this also revives them a little bit and she'll be just fine on this side of the pool and let her chill out over here and recover away from that active spot. Alright. That ought to do it. Let her go. See ya. I actually learned that um, from a from someone that guided up here for a period of time and in the winter he said and this is back before this section was catch and release but we would live well you know I think you can keep five a piece or, or back then you could whatever it was that's what we kept in the live well at whatever spot we were at and then once we had five a piece in the live well um, <clears throat> you know we'd release them all go to another hole and, and work that one but the idea of, you know, not putting your fish, your freaked out fish, back in there, uh, it absolutely works. He actually um, caught me messing up, you know, and throwing one back right in, into an active, you know, winter pot of fish. And, he, and he's like, what'd you do? I'm like, I just have it, you know, you catch them, put them back. He's like, all right, I want you to fish this, you know, and we had been catching them every cast you know, up until that point. And it was, and I, you know, I caught another one there, but it took me 15 minutes and he just waited. He's like, you believe me now? I said, yeah, I do. So let's see if I can drop anchor again. Get back in the same spot. That fish wasn't didn't whack it real hard it was just sort of there I mean I could kind of feel you know a slow build of pressure moving in one direction like right now I can feel that rock the first one I got whacked it it went pop this last one not so much but this is the active spot it's shallow there's a ledge right above it and everything that way, everything downstream is is deep. 
Um, so this is the, the most furthest pushed up and then shallowest, you know, in that furthest pushed up against the, the top ledge of the deep water. Um, it's just, it's their feeding station. The keys to feeling the bite, and sometimes you don't feel the bite, you just feel something's different than it was a second ago. Um, but the key to knowing when to set the hook in when you're fishing something that small in this cold of water is to focus. Uh, it helps to have, have good equipment. I have the best rod that St. Croix makes right here. It's a St. Croix Legend Extreme. I've got braided line that doesn't stretch, fluorocarbon leader that doesn't stretch, and um, it, it helps that it's not windy today. Wind really puts a bow in your line and makes it so your line is not straight from the tip of your, your rod down to the bait. Um, when you do have windy conditions or, or when you have more current, um, which I don't have a lot of current here, but <clears throat> the current and the wind will both bow your line out and you want to make shorter cast with heavier weights. Um, <clears throat> I can stay fairly light today because it's not windy. Um, there's a lot of different things that can help you feel a bite, but the biggest thing is to have positive mental attitude is in, and really to expect, yes, it's going to happen. I'm going to get a bite in this spot. And it's hard to do. I mean, when I've, I've caught three fish all day and... Um, <clears throat> But, but that's what makes good fishermen. They're, they're hopeful. I think, you know, a lot of people think, oh, a fisherman's patient. No, I think, I think hopeful is, uh, is a better singular, you know, adjective for the fisherman. Um, it helps to, to know some good spots and, and developing, you know, a list of spots that you know are, are going to produce fish. Uh, it takes a lot of work. Uh, occasionally you have somebody that shares a good spot with you and um, you want to learn from that spot and but keep moving and, and find your own spots um, I, I did a very good chapter for the the DVD I did on winter river smallmouth fishing on the process and basically you're fishing from September through December in the same um, same stretches I don't have to go over all of it, but it's it's worth uh, the process. Is a chapter in that DVD that's worth uh, watching if you if you want to catch Winter River smallmouth. Um, but have your good spots and and really focus on them and and uh, have positive mental attitude. There are fish here. I I know that there are because I've caught them here. Um, but even if you're not sure, lie to yourself a little bit and, and until you do believe and it really it really just gets you on point where you're paying attention you have that focus so that when you get that little tap or or just you know you know what the bottom feels like and, and it's there and all of a sudden it doesn't feel like it did and your lines maybe drifting a little bit to the left it's time to set the hook so I've been focusing and I'm pretty focused on the fact that I'm snagged so I'm gonna go get that motor up get a little bit upstream of it Next spot, here we come. All right, it is two in the afternoon. I have three fish and I'm um, catching up with uh, Bear and Pete and it looks like they have done something to warm up. At least the sun's coming out, that'll help us warm up. But uh, 
they took the more direct path. You guys feel your toes yet? My toes are warm. Good. Good and warm. So, you want to give this this 1103 a run? Yeah, I'll give it a try. All right. Let's see what it's all about. You getting one? I'm gonna get one. Okay. So you got one on order, on pre-order. Yep. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> how'd you end up doing with MAKBF? last year where, uh, where did you end ended up fourth okay. for aoi right. um going into the final one i was sitting a second but by the end of the day it dropped me down two spots to four so yep uh qualified through them as well as finishing fourth on nvkba's uh lake anna event that they had i finished fourth for them so i qualified for the national championship there nice so it worked out good so you'll be down in alabama with us in yep. a couple months yep at the end of march beginning of april Cool. Well, we should definitely have 1103s by then. That'll be good. We got the first ones coming in uh, in February. Okay. Um, folks that have pre-ordered will get get some of those, and mm -hmm. you know, first come, first serve. So. Okay. You got yours in. You'll certainly have one by then. Good. Sounds good. Pretty cool. Great, man. Speed is uh, instant. It's You can't tell that you're picking up two, seven mile an hour, five mile an hour. It's there automatically. Um, steering's really good. Responds well. Uh, stopping. You know, once you let off the power, it turns the motor directly off. Quiet. No humming anymore. Um, good product. I really can't wait until I get mine. Nice. Yep. brother or sister in there hooked right there small baits if you find it difficult to focus on something that isn't happening yet the bite um, the, the best thing I can tell you is to focus on what is happening what does what does it feel like with the micro jig just sitting there on bottom you can you can feel that if it's on rock you can feel that it's solidly on there and if you just focus on that when that's interrupted when that's different when that you know changes somehow and you haven't done anything like pull the the rod back to to change it if it's not you doing you know the action to make it feel different um, that's that's how you start recognizing when one's picked it up very very um, softly all right we're into the shortest daylight period of the year which means that uh you know it's it's 4 30 and uh i'm about three miles from the launch and uh, I need to boogie. Need to get back upstream, catch up with uh, with Bear and Pete, and uh, call it a day. But it's been a good day. 
and uh, I'm glad that I can get back up to the launch quickly. Let's check that out. So at this speed, I have 2.2 miles of range, 2.3. I'm gonna back off till I get that up over three. Let me speed it up a little bit more. There. So I've got 3.1 miles of range holding steady at about 773 watts, 5.4 miles per hour. I know that I'll get back there. It's quite a haul. What all did you find? What goodies? Uh, we got some uh, Bud Light, got a headlamp, a couple <laughs> quarts of oil, some foam, some uh, styrofoam cups. A lot of styrofoam floating yeah. around, but uh, yeah, it took 10 minutes, filled up two bags. Riverbank looks a lot cleaner. Nice.